Hi there, welcome back for part three of Bacterial Diseases of the Respiratory System. This is Lisa Schimmel, Professor of Microbiology at Crafton Hills College. All right, we're gonna talk about uh, three types of pneumonia caused by different bacteria. The first on my list is pneumonia caused by Streptococcus pneumoniae. Now, this is a gram-positive alpha hemolytic bacterium. Alpha hemolysis, of course, means that when grown on blood auger, the organism produces exoenzymes that will partially break down red blood cells, and this will cause a, uh, a discoloration of the blood auger, kind of a maybe an olive green khaki uh, color, rather than uh, a total breakdown of red blood cells like we see uh, during beta hemolysis. Now, this, is, uh, this organism is a very common cause of bacterial pneumonias. It causes about 70% of bacterial pneumonias. Now, just to remind you, uh, there are many causes of pneumonia. Pneumonia could be caused by bacteria, uh, could be caused by uh, fungi, even protozoans in some cases, but we're gonna talk now about these three examples of bacterial pneumonias. Now, this organism, Strep pneumoniae, it is normal flora of the upper respiratory system in some individuals. And so that means, as far as transmission is concerned, uh, while it could be acquired through inhalation of airborne droplets, even more often it's going to be a normal flora of an individual who becomes immunocompromised for one reason or another uh, that grows to the point where it does cause a disease state in its host. So an immuno, immunocompromised individual, that is the ideal candidate for this particular type of pneumonia. So because of this uh, transmission or, or rather um, opportunistic um, microorganism situation, it's really not um, possible for me to give you a, a useful incubation period time. So why don't we just say that incubation is variable for this particular disease. Once the patient does begin to exhibit symptoms, they would include a fever, edema of the lungs, which means swelling, and this makes uh, breathing difficult for the patient. Uh, in, additionally, fluids will accumulate in the lungs and this severely limits gas exchange. Now, 70% of individuals with this form of pneumonia will see a spontaneous recovery within about five to seven days. Spontaneous recovery means that they recover without um, any treatment being necessary. Uh, some people will die from this disease. It is a, a very serious disease. Typically, the people that succumb to it are going to be elderly individuals, let's say 70 years of age or older. Uh, there is a, a, a pneumococcal vaccine available to uh, help uh, prevent this type of pneumonia. This is typically given to uh, the elderly segment of our population, and usually they give a multivalent uh, uh, vaccine, one that covers a number of different strains of uh, pneumococcal pneumonia. Uh, treatment, if necessary, on the top of the list would be um, either penicillin or a good alternative would be erythromycin. Okay, let's uh, move on and talk about what's known as atypical pneumonia, sometimes referred to as walking pneumonia. This one is caused by mycoplasma pneumoniae. And this is a very tiny bacterium. It naturally lacks a cell wall. So it really um, it doesn't have any meaning to refer to it as gram positive or gram negative. You, you need a cell wall to be one of those things. Uh, and perhaps you'll remember from your bacterial survey, this organism is a common contaminant of uh, tissue cultures in, uh, in research and um, hospital laboratories. It's also a, a very slow grower, and I'll, I'll talk about that again in just a moment. Um, now, the organism does not grow well on artificial media. Uh, as a matter of fact, if we have a patient present with pneumonia-like symptoms, and um, we don't believe based on the exact symptoms that it's a viral um, etiology. And if we um, try to cultivate the organism on um, artificial media in the laboratory and it's just not growing very well for us, then we may go ahead and make a presumptive diagnosis of um, mycoplasma pneumoniae and treat appropriately. Mm -hmm. We see outbreaks of this form of pneumonia in close social groups like daycare centers or families. And most frequently, we see this form of pneumonia in young people between 5 and 15 years of age. Uh, respiratory secretions, inhalation, cough, sneeze-produced droplets is the most likely means of transmission. 
incubation ranges from one to four weeks. So even the incubation period is relatively long. Uh, symptoms when they do begin, they may last for three weeks or longer and they include a low grade fever, cough, a headache, and some cases will become severe enough to require hospitalization. Now, diagnosis, a little bit tricky because the organism doesn't grow well in the laboratory on artificial media. Uh, so it's going to be grown on a very complex media that contains horse serum and yeast extract. I would think uh, you would agree that this is a pretty fastidious microorganism. And it might take as long as three weeks to actually get it to grow. And even after that period of time, the colonies are so small that you'd require a microscope to actually see them. So you can see that that uh, type of diagnosis uh, is really not as satisfactory as we'd like. Now, we can also diagnose with more modern techniques, including polymerase chain reaction. This is sometimes called PCR technique, and that will allow for a diagnosis within probably just a few days. Treatment, now I know this is going to contradict uh, something that you learned in the antimicrobial drugs section, but tetracycline tops the list. Now, of course, that wouldn't be an appropriate choice for a, an individual in the five to 15 uh, year uh, range of age, but there are other choices um, that would be appropriate and your physician will guide you on that. Okay, let's move on and talk about pneumonia caused by Klebsiella pneumoniae. This is a gram-negative bacillus, a rather small one. Uh, it forms a capsule and it's non-modal. This organism is actually relatively common in nature. It can be found in uh, soil, in water, and also on uh, rotting vegetation. And it may be normal flora of the upper respiratory system in some individuals. Uh, Centers for Disease Control says that perhaps five to 10% of the American population does harbor this organism as a part of their upper respiratory system, normal flora. And so once again, just like uh, when I was discussing with you pneumonia caused by strep pneumonia, an, an immunocompromised patient, that's gonna be our ideal candidate for this form of pneumonia. Oh, I wanted to mention that uh, Klebsiella pneumoniae got a, a promotion of sorts not that long ago. It's actually been elevated to superbug status. Now, what that means is, is that this organism has become resistant to the first line of treatment that has traditionally been used uh, for these, uh, these infections. So that's most certainly a problem. Okay, as far as transmission goes, um, as I mentioned earlier, most likely normal flora that's become opportunistic, and that also makes the incubation period a little bit difficult to define. So once again, let's say the incubation period is variable for this disease. Uh, symptoms when they do occur are going to include a high fever and chills, flu-like symptoms, by that I mean a headache and uh, body ache, joint aches, and a productive cough. Sometimes the um, sputum that's produced is referred to as a current jelly sputum. Now, just in case you don't know what currants are, they are tiny little red berries, so that's um, a little bit uh, disgusting. All right, now treatment. Because of the elevation to superbug status, every case is going to have to be um, uh, treated at individually and susceptibility testing will need to be done to determine the appropriate antibiotic to treat that particular infection. So I'm not going to give you a specific antibiotic for treatment of Klebsiella caused by pneumonia. All right, and next on our list is um, Legionella. Uh, or legionellosis, uh, caused by uh, uh, Legionella pneumophilia, um, also caused, uh, excuse me, called Legionnaire's disease sometimes. Now, this bacterium is a gram-negative bacillus. Uh, it also causes uh, a milder disease called Pontiac fever. And that um, has some mild respiratory symptoms, which are usually self-limiting. But I wanna talk about the more serious disease known as Legionnaire's disease some interesting history associated with this one. The, uh, the first um, known outbreak occurred in 1977, and it occurred in um, uh, Philadelphia at a Legionnaires convention. And what happened was, uh, shortly after the convention ended, um, a significant, <coughs> excuse me, a significant number of people 
fell ill and several of them died. As a matter of fact, there were um, 221 sick people and 34 deaths, and this occurred uh, in a rel relatively short period of time. So the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention were called in, their epidemiologists went to work to try to determine what was causing uh, the illnesses and the deaths, and they were having trouble um, uh, isolating anything from the, um, from the patients or from the uh, environment, the convention center. And it wasn't until someone decided to inoculate some guinea pigs with samples from the patients that they had some luck. Uh, they did uh, get a bacterium to grow. It was named Legionella pneumophilia in honor uh, of the, um, the convention in this situation. And once the organism was identified, I'm not suggesting that in any way it was a, like a new bacterium, just that we had not uh, seen it yet because it is rather difficult to grow in the lab. But once it was identified, it was found, <coughs> excuse me, to be actually rather common in nature. Uh, some of the environments in which it's been found include uh, in shower stalls, on uh, cruise liners. There have been actually a couple of um, incidents where Legionella infections have uh, run through cruise liners. Uh, hot tubs, decorative fountains, the sprayers that they keep produce moist with in the grocery store. Uh, and there have even been a few cases documented where people became infected after working with um, moist garden soil. So uh, uh, presumably they inhaled an aspirate uh, containing the bacterium. All right, so transmission. In the case of the Legionnaires Convention, what happened was the air conditioning system became contaminated with the organism. And when the air conditioning system was turned on, the organism was literally blown throughout the convention center and um, people inhaled it and that's how they became sick. All right, um, oh, and I wanted to mention this disease is not contagious from person to person. So inhalation is um, how it's going to be acquired. Incubation takes two to 10 days and then the symptoms are going to include a high fever, could be as high as 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the patient will also have a headache, muscle ache, chills, confusion, uh, or other um, changes in their mental status, um, uh, confusion, difficulty, concentrating, uh, a cough, malaise, chest and abdominal pain, diarrhea, acute kidney failure, that, that can be the cause of death for some patients, and if untreated, the patient, um, or excuse me, we're going to see a mortality rate that ranges from uh, 15 to 30 percent and uh, we will see um, severe pneumonia followed by shock. All right, um, uh, oh by the way I wanted to mention that the patient is likely going to require hospitalization for possibly as long as two to three weeks. This is uh, most definitely a, a serious disease. All right, so how do we diagnose the patient? Well a chest x-ray isn't going to confirm that it's Legionella, but it can indicate to us that there is an infection in the lungs. Uh, we can um, obtain a sputum sample or a sample of lung tissue. We uh, may be able to identify the organism uh, in one of those um, samples. And we can do a CT scan of the brain or a spinal tap uh, to examine the spinal fluid if the patient has reached the point where we're seeing confusion and and other dementia-like symptoms. Uh, treatment, uh, as I said, hospitalization is likely going to be required, and erythromycin tops uh, the um, choices of antibiotics to treat this infection. All right, you guys, this wraps up bacterial diseases of the respiratory system. Thanks for watching.